Hello everybody and welcome on this course about HTML and CSS. I'm going to show you everything we need to start coding in HTML. So basically right now I'm on my desktop and I have nothing. What I got to do to follow this course, I need to have two uh, softwares. The first software is a browser, so it can be Google Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Internet Explorer, Internet Edge. Okay, so basically um, you might already have your uh, browser open and this is what we are going to use to display our HTML pages. Once you get your HTML browser, what you need else is a code editor. So basically, I'm going to present to you several code editors that you can use. The one that I am going to use is Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code, it's a very professional uh, code editor. So you can download it and as you see here, after that you can write code and then display it, okay? Another one, it's Atom Editor. So Atom Editor, it's um, another software that you can use to write um, code. And the last one that I like a lot, it's Sublime Code Editor. So what I propose you to do, because if you are a beginner, you should download first Sublime Text, because as you see, it's going to be easy to understand and to write code on it. You should start on it. And later you will come on Visual Studio Code to use packages, etc., etc. if you want to go further inside the code development, of course. Okay? So, once you've got your code editor, you can open it. And if I open my code editor by clicking here on Visual Studio Code, it's going to open for me a new window. So basically, the code editor, they allow you to write code, then to save it as files. So if you downloaded Visual Studio Code or Sublime Code, you should have a window empty or here with a tab and you close this. And basically what you have on most of the code editor, it's two parts. You've got this um, tab in here, this part of the, the window, which is called the tree view. The tree view, it's the organization, the architecture of the current folder you are in. So basically if I click here and I open a folder, I can open my desktop and on my desktop, I will see that I got, there we go, my folder Guillaume. So if I get back to the desktop here, we see that I got the folder. And I can open the folder and see what is inside, etc., etc. Okay? On the other part of the window, you've got, okay, this empty stuff right now here, this empty part, this empty square, and this square is going to be the, the, the page where you're going to write your code, the page where you're going to work. It's like in Word, uh, in a text editor like Word, you've got your page where you write code. So basically in here, what I got to do is to create a new file, okay? This file is going to be our first HTML pages. But basically, before, I'm going to show you what is it, uh, an HTML pages. If I go, for instance, on Visual Studio Code official website, and it's going to be the same on every website, and if I right click, and you can do it on all the browsers, okay? You got inspect in here. And if, ah, so I'm going to open it in here, it's going to be to be more clear. If you click on inspect, your browser is going to open some kind of console, okay? So all of this, it's a console that helps you to manage what's happening on the browser. And in here, on the element part on Google Chrome, I got HTML code, code display. And this HTML code, this is the code which display our website, okay? So the website is a document in HTML written, okay? And this code is displaying my website.
So this is what we're going to do right now. You have your code editor open and you have your browser also open. Let's get back on the code editor and let's create our first HTML file. So basically in here, I'm on my desktop and what I want to do, I want to right click and click on new file. Okay. And now it's opening a file and I, I need to write the name of the file. But I also need to write the extension of this file. What is an extension? You already know that, for instance, images have a type of JPEG, PNG, etc., etc. So basically, we have to write HTML as an extension. So first, we are going to call our file index because index it's supposed to be the main file of website and we will see later that there will be links that goes from this index.html file to other html pages because a website it's several html pages linked so here i'm going to type index.html and i'm going to type enter and there we go, my file is open, index.html is open. Back on your browser, so me, it's not open. In here, I'm going to get back to another website, for instance, the Sublime Code Editor website. I'm going to right click and click on inspect. So as you see, every website is an HTML page. And if I look closer, we see that when I pass my mouse, there are some elements that turn blue, orange, etc., etc., on the screen. Those elements are defined by the HTML I'm in with my mouse. So basically, if I click here, we see that I'm on an element that is called a section. Those elements, those parts of our HTML pages are defined by what, by what we call tags. Those tags are written between chevrons, and in here, we see mainly that we have body tag, header, script, division, main, etc., etc. We are going to see all these elements all along this course. So basically, in here, we see that body is in blue. If I close body, it seems that body is the entire website. And up there, we see that we got a head. We are going to see the difference now. Going back to our code editor, we are going to write our first HTML code. So basically, as I told you, you cannot type HTML like this. You have to open every time Chevron, Chevron HTML, and you close it. Okay. So me, I have a package that automatically close my uh, HTML tag. But you, you're supposed to have only this. You have to know that every time you open a chevron like this, you have to close it just after. All right. So let's say that later you will have to create an element called div. You have to close it. It means that this is the beginning and this is the end. OK, so basically what we need to do in here in HTML, what we could do, we could write text. So, for instance, hello, this is my first HTML page. All right. So now I'm going to get back to my desktop. And on my desktop, I got my index.html file. If you do not have it on your code editor, you're supposed to go back to your desktop by instance, clicking on file and open the desktop. And I'm going to take it and slip it to my code Google Chrome. And what's happening? It's opening locally my first HTML page. So congratulations, you've created your first HTML page. You have created your first HTML page. Let's now see how to organize your document. So right now my HTML page is really empty. There's nothing written into it. And if I look by right clicking on the file that I've created, we see that 
the HTML file that I've created looks like this. But you are going to say to me, there is a head that we didn't put on our file that appears in here. This is because HTML is made to create the organization and the architecture of your document. A document, this is a first page, then an index, then uh, parts of your documents that display images, etc., etc. So basically, every HTML page should have a head tag open up there. And if you don't put it, it's putting it by itself. Why do we need this head? This head tag is made for robots, for they understand what is the page about. In this head, we are going to put many other tags that will give information to robots that helps them to index your website in Google, for instance. And down there, we got a body. And in this body, it's supposed to be everything that contains our website. So basically, I'm going to put my hello, this is my first HTML page in here. And I'm going to say get back. And there we go. So what we could do first is to put a title to our website. And this title is not going to appear here. It's going to appear in here, in our tab. Like we have Sublime Text here, we want a title here. So I'm going to type title, my blog's title, all right? And if I save and I get back and I update, we see that my title change. All right. So basically in here, we are looking at the code of, of Sublime and we see that there are many elements that describe what they represent. So let's look uh, a little bit on what HTML element we could put in here. So now let's see all the tag elements we can use in HTML to display text, image, video, etc, etc. So basically in here, in my body, what I could do first is open a new tag called P. And P, this is for paragraph. So basically it's for main text. So here I could type here main text. And if I update, my element is displayed in here. It's supposed to be for long paragraph and long text that you display in elements, etc., etc. But if I want to put a title to this paragraph, what I should use is the H tag. So the H tags, there are six different H tags. The first one is H1. So um, I'm going to type main title in here. Okay. The H1, it's to display the title of the current page. So basically, here I'm on the main page, so I'm supposed to type main page. But if I go on another HTML file that we will write later, for instance, it could be the title of an article. Okay. So basically, H1 exists only one time in an HTML page. All right. So if I update, we see here that the H1 is bigger and is in bold. All right. If I want to put a subtitle, I could use the lower level of H1, which is H2, of course. So lower uh, main subtitle or main subtitle. OK. I save, I get back and we see here that my subtitle made a space, so it's the same for the H1, and it is in bold, but lower. And we could do this with H3, for instance, all right? And you would see that at the end, the last one we could do is H6, okay? So there is H6, H4, H5, H4, H3, etc., etc. Okay, so here we see that it's a little one, all right? So let's say that we want to keep just the main title and this, okay? Let's say that down here, we got actually content of my page, okay? And here, main description, for instance, 
and at the end we've got footer of my page because if you see on many websites you get a banner with a text you get blog posts that we are going to create later for instance or you get uh, your friends talking on facebook etc etc and at the bottom you get the footer how could i make the difference between all those parts for instance those two elements are supposed to be in one. It's supposed to be in a banner, for instance. In HTML, to separate elements, what you got to do, you got to create divisions, headers, or footer. So basically, in here, I could open a header, okay, a tag header, not head, header. Getting back in here, nothing happened. But inside this header, what I could do, I could put my two elements and say, this is the header. Because most of the time, the header isn't changing from a page to another. It's always the same with the name of your uh, title, your background, your options on Facebook, for instance. It's always the same, but the content of the page is changing. The header is supposed to be the place where you can navigate from page to page, and we are going to see that after. So basically, we could have created a header, and of course, the header is supposed to be at the top. It cannot be on the bottom. For the content of the page, I could keep my P. But let's say that inside my P, I want to have a title, you know, like an H1. I wouldn't do this. We don't put H1 inside P or P inside H1. We have, to, we have to put first the highest element that is in the hierarchy of HTML. If you want to have more information about this, you can go on developermozilla.org and you can type HTML. I'm going to put the link down in, in the description. And in here you have the, all the documentation, so I'm going to put it in English all the documentation about HTML. So you understand that you get many elements. So basically, there we go. So what we could do instead of putting a P like this, and let's say we want to have a H2 like my, uh, my, my content title, all right? What we could do, we could create instead a section, okay? And we could have, for, the, for this instance, several sections in comparison to the header where we're supposed to have only one, all right? And in this section, I, I could do exactly the same that I, that I have in here. And for the footer, it's the same. We could create a footer, all right? So most of the time on the website where you're gonna go, you will not have section like this, okay? You would have a main, and inside the main, you would have several sections okay this is mainly the hierarchy of a html page and this is really important because the robot wants to read everything that's important or not what section is corresponding to what etc he has to understand how you organize your html code and more you organize your code the best the robot is going to index you inside HTML. This is what we call SEO, Search Engine Optimization. This is why it's really important to create really good organization of documents for Google take you in the first page, for instance. All right, we organized our HTML page. Let's get back in here. And let's say that here, for instance, so I'm going to remove those section and keep only this section. I want to display an image, okay, just in here. What I have to do, I have to use the image tag, all right? So the image tag have what we call an attribute. So as you see in here, I'm not closing the image tag, okay? Because some tags of HTML can be what we call self-closing. It doesn't work for the H2 because we need to put content inside. Because when I write my content title in here, it means that I put content inside the H2. Okay. But in here, in this image, I have no content to pass. 
the only content that I have to pass is an attribute. What are attributes? Attribute, it's element that you put inside your tag and give information to the tag on how to behave. So basically here, image have an obligatory attribute. If I save and I get back, we see that I got some blank space because I didn't put the source of my image. So basically this attribute here will appear in purple, okay? And here we have to use an attribute called sourced. This is the obligatory source attribute of the image. If you don't put a source, you will have nothing display. And those attributes, they receive what we call an argument or a variable. And in here, I have to open the codes to say what source do I want to put in that image. The image is a container and you have to put an image inside to display it. If you don't, dis if you don't put this attribute, there will just only the container empty. So basically in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the web, on Google image, for instance, bike. Okay, bike. Okay, and let's say that I like this image. And uh, oh, this image is a bit too small. Yes, this image, this image is really big. Okay, so I'm going to right click and copy and uh, record this image. Okay, I'm going to call it image. There we go. Okay, and I get back in here and I see here that I got my image in my tree view. So I can get it and put it inside here. So the tree view is organized that you have to go upper to a folder to find an element if this element is on the folder on the upper side. But here I'm on the same level as index. To explain this, I'm going to show you inside Guillaume, I got many elements, but they are inside Guillaume. So I can't get directly the element from index.html. I should use all the IT stuff that helped me to get it. But here, if you don't understand right now, it's not a problem. I'm going to explain it later. But here, image is on the same level. So what I have to type in here inside my source attribute is image.jpg, okay? We see it's in green for me. So I'm gonna save and get back. And there we go. I got my big image display, but the thing is the image is really, really big, okay? We are going to fix that later in CSS. So this is really cool. What's happening right now is that my image is displayed, but there is another way to do it. If I remove my image, so I click and I delete the image and I update, it doesn't find my image anymore. So this is why you get this little picture. But what I could do in here, get back on the image on Google, I could right click and copy the address of the image just here, okay? So copy the address of the image, get back. And in here, I'm going to paste the address on the web. I save and I get back to my page. And what's happening? The image is still appearing, but not anymore from my desktop. The explanation is easy. It's because with source, you can go on the web and fetch content from the web directly from the source in here. So the last thing I want to show you today is how to display a video from YouTube. And let's say that I want to display this video. What I can do in here, I can click on share. And here I got a button called embed. If I click on embed here, I have HTML code. And if I copy paste this A-frame code back in here, I can paste the code. And we see here that this video has many arguments, many attributes, such as the width, the height, the frame border, and other elements. What does it do? The iframe allows us to create a video 
inside our HTML page. All right, let's talk now about the architecture of a website. I told you that a website is a combination of HTML, scripts, uh, images, video, etc. etc. So basically what we're going to do here, we are going to create a new folder. So I'm going to right click and click on new folder. And I'm going to call it my blog. Okay. And inside my blog, I'm going to slip my index.html. Okay, so now all my website is supposed to be in my blog. And if I go here and I, and I update, index.html is not anymore on my Dex desktop. Here, it's not the address of the website, it's the location locally. So basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get back on my desktop, click on my blog, and open again. And there we go. I am back on my HTML page. So what we want to do, we want to create a blog. And what is a blog? A blog, it's a main page that display the latest posts. So those posts are other HTML pages and those posts can get you back to the main page. All right. So basically in here, I'm going to remove all of this and I'm going to say here, I will find my latest blog blog posts. All right. So if I get back and I update, there we go. I'm supposed to have a list of my posts, but I have to write these posts. So what I'm going to do inside my blog folder, I'm going to create a new folder and this folder is going to be posts. Okay. And inside this folder, I will put all the posts that I write and from here, I will put links. So we will see how we can link HTML page together because this is what the web is for. The web is for linking pages together. So basically in post in here, I'm going to create a new file and this new file can be post tiere one HTML. And this is a new HTML page. So basically, I have to do exactly the same as I told you before. Create an head with a title and in this title, I can make post one and then a body. And I can put this is the body of my post one. Let's say that I copy paste this post one into post two. And I got my post two in here. This is the body of my post two in here. Okay. I save, I, I go back, but in here I'm on H index.html. Where I should go is post one. Okay. Post one.html, the file I just created. And if I type enter, there is nothing. Why? Because I am not at the root of my blog. I am on the folder post. So back in here, what I should do is typing slash post slash post one HTML. And if I type enter, I am on my post one HTML page. Okay. So every post is going to be every time a new HTML page. This is what we call a model. We are going to create this model right now. So basically on the post one, we want to create a type of, um, how to say, a type of article. So basically an article in here, it's a title and this title is going to be H1. So post title. All right. So I save, I get back and there we go. After that, we want to create, um, so basically here we are going to put it inside a header, post title. We want to put an image. Okay. So later this image will have a source and an alt. Alt it's text for the image. So basically uh, my post image. All right. And inside here again, we will have a main and inside this main, we will have paragraph different paragraph that says stuff. So I'm going to go on 
Loren Ipsum. It's a text generator. And this text generator will help me to put fake content. So I'm going to copy paste this. There we go. And then another. All right. So a post, it's a post title. It can be a date. So let's say in here, I'm going to create a paragraph. So my date. Okay. Actually, my post date. And I want to have it in italic. So what I could do, I can open. Yeah, there we go. The e tag, which means that you want to have it in italic. And there we go, my post date. I want to also have before that, and I don't necessarily want to have a space. Um, I can create what we call a span. A span, it's a paragraph or an element without space. So, uh, author Guillaume Durand. Okay. Author Guillaume Durand. Okay. I save, I get back in here, and there we go. Okay. So I'm going to copy this model. So basically in here, this model is supposed to be the model of our post. And every post on every pages is supposed to have this model. So if I go on post two, I'm going to change. I'm going to copy paste and every post is going to look the same. So post title post two title, let's say, and post one title, okay? Post one and post two look, look exactly the same because this is how it works. An article is always the same. So this is our model. So I update and if I go on post 2html it looks the same. Of course, the content should be different because this is different articles. So now I'm going to get back on my index.html and I want to have in here a list of posts. So to create a list in HTML, you can use the tag UL. Okay, UL, it means that you want to create a list. And the element is called Lee. So you can have several elements, element one, element two, element three, three, not four. So I save, I get back. And in here, we, we see that we got a list of elements. So UL, it means this is a menu. So I'm here, I'm going to put my menu. This is for you to understand. This is my menu. And here, I want to go to post one. And then I want to go to post two. So how do I do this? By using an anchor. So this anchor, I'm going to remove this text in here, open my Lee, and I'm going to type A. And I'm going to put my text in here, okay? This anchor is taking an attribute called href. And href is going to be the path, okay? It's going to be the path from index.html to my post1. And it's going to be the same for post2. All right? And if I get back and I update, we see that they look purple or blue. Here they look purple because I already went there. And if I click, nothing happens, okay? Because I didn't put any href. So I want to go to page post one, okay? So in order to do so, I have to get to the post folder. So I got to type posts because I'm on index is on the same level as post and post one.html. Okay? So now I get back and if I update and I click on post one, so I, I refresh, there we go. I have created a link, an anchor link to the HTML page to the post one. And I can do the same for post two. Okay. But the thing is now I want to get back. How do I do this? It's really easy. On post one, what I'm going to do before the header, for instance, or inside the header, let's say, I'm going to create a new anchor called back to index.html, back to home, actually. And here I got to go upper. In order to do so, I got to type point, uh, because point, it means in this folder, 
and another point to say the folder, folder upper slash index.html. I save, I get back, and here I have back to home. And if I click to back to home, I'm on the index. From the index, I can click to again to post one. I am the post one, and then back to home in here. Okay? So remember, you have to put the link on every page. If you don't do it, you won't have the link to click back. Okay, guys, we've got a website and the architectures of HTML file. We created posters and that are related to the index.html. Um, and now I did some changes. Let's look a little bit at what I did. I've created a header called by blog with my photo and a description and then a menu. And now if we look at the list we created, I've created anchors that leads us to post one, post two, post three. And instead of having text, I put images and those different images are related to the image inside the article. It's exactly the same. Because if you click on an image for an article, it leads you to an article that contains the image, of course. And what I did inside the post, I've changed my header. The header is the same on every page I go to. What we're going to do now is that you see the images are too big. The background is white. The text is black. What we want to do is to make some design. And the architecture helps you to create the, the HTML, sorry, helps you to create the architecture of your website. But it doesn't help you to make style. Okay? It doesn't help you to uh, change colors and everything. The language that you need to learn to do that, it's CSS. So CSS, it's another language as HTML, it helps you to apply colors. So basically what we could do in here is that we got our bike blog uh, title in here and uh, I'm going to zoom a bit. And what I want to do, I want to turn it into a red title. I want the color red. You can do CSS inside HTML by using the attribute style, okay? And here inside style, you can put CSS. So we are going to learn together how to write CSS. So basically CSS is different from HTML, but in here I could write color, two points, red, and at the end, semicolon, okay? So basically my H1 style as an attribute, and CSS written in here. I save, I get back, and if I update, my title turn into red, okay? These are the basis color inside HTML. I could have put green, okay? I could have put yellow, okay? But I cannot put a random color like a purple sky. I don't know, it doesn't exist, okay? You have also the codes the HAX codes for colors, but here we are going to use the, the, the HTML color in here, okay? So amazing, and what I want to do, I want to make it center. So what I could do just after the semicolon, because if you remove the semicolon, you cannot write after. So you got to put semicolon. I could put text align center. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to save, and there we go, it's on the center. So basically in here, if we would like to change every element of the website, it would be very long. And at the end, we will have so much code in here that we could not read anything. So what we can do, we could create an HTML file out, uh, uh, sorry, a CSS file, what we call a style sheet, outside our HTML. So basically in here, I'm going to right click and create a new file called style.css. 
And as you see me, I have the blue thing that tell me I'm going to put it into my blog because I want it at the same level. Okay. And in here, let's start to write our CSS that we are going to link to this HTML file. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to link your CSS style to a page. And I'm also going to learn to you how to discover the main elements to start writing CSS. So basically here I have a style.css and how do we write CSS? So it's really easy. We can select elements. So you don't need to open chevrons in CSS. It doesn't work like this. What you have to do is, if you want to select an element, you have to type his name or uh, type his type. So basically here I could write for the title that we got in here, h1, which is here. Okay. I could type h1 and I have to open just after a space curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets, I can put elements. So in here, remember, we want our H1 to have the color red. And so I'm going to type color, two points, red. Okay. So here you get the property and here you get the value. And every time you are going to use new, um, uh, new uh, syntax that we see here, but I, what I call property, you will type first the property, then two points, then the value and semicolon. Okay. So let's say that here we want the H1 to have the color red, but also to be centered. So I'm going to use text align. And in here, you see, you get many of the elements that I could uh, add. So text align. And in here, he proposed me to type. So center and justify left, right, etc. So I'm going to type center. And there we go. And I'm going to save. And if I get back and I update, nothing happens. This is really easy to understand. This is because I didn't link the style CSS to HTML uh, file. So here in my head, this is here that I'm going to say, go get this file, bring it and make it part of you. I cannot call this file in here by an anchor, okay? I could not type this because if I type this and say my style, okay, I'm going to relate to the text of the style and I'm not gonna apply the style. What I want, I want that this style is going to be applied in here. In order to do so, I have to do it in the head of my file. So in here, I'm going to type link I'm going to open the chevron link and it's a self-closing tag, such as the image. And this link has an attribute rel. So this attribute names a relationship to the linked document to the current document. And we say it's a style sheet. So here, this index HTML file is going to be linked to a style sheet. And here we see the ref that we got from our anchor. And I'm going to put in here style.css. Okay. So I save, I get back. Now I got my title in black. I update and suddenly, suddenly all the CSS from my style.css has been included in here. All right. So let's get back to our architecture. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder called assets and assets. We are going to put style inside assets. So I'm going to move it. And basically, this is where we're going to put all the styles. So basically here, I'm going to type assets slash style. All right. So there we go. So the thing is now all the H1 will be centered and in red. So if I copy paste a second H1, just for the example, my second title and I get back, I update. All my title will have the color red and maybe this is not what I want to do. Okay. In order to do so, instead of selecting the H1, 
such I could have selected the paragraph with color blue, okay? And if I get back, all my paragraph will be in blue, as you see. If I want to select a specific element, there is two ways. And those two ways, this is to define an ID for a unique element, so an element that will exist just one time, or a class. So basically, here, I have my two titles, and I don't want to be, I don't want to have this, okay? Let's say that I want to remove the color. I want to have the first one in red and the second in blue. To do this, I can put IDs to the H1. So here, I'm going to type ID as an attribute and another ID for the second. So here, I'm, I can put ID first and here, ID second. So the two elements are not the same now. Back in my style sheet, I'm going to type hashtag. Hashtag, it means that you want to select a specific ID. So hashtag are for ID. And I'm going to type first. And then I'm going to do the same for second. Okay? If you want to make a longer name, you cannot put a long name like a second element like this. You always have to stick and use a camel case. So camel case... It means that at the beginning of every word, uh, we put a capital letter, okay? This is correct. This is not correct. This is not correct. This is correct, okay? So we want the first one to be in blue, so color blue, and the second one to be red, so color red. All right? I get back, I update, and we make a distinction. But the thing is that we inherited from the H1 in here, okay? So it says that all H1 will be centered. That's really cool. That's really cool. But let's say that you want to do this. Put the two ID on the same elements. This is a bad practice. Don't do this. Instead, if you want to do the same class well, why we would do this? For instance, let's say that you would put the same uh, attributes to two elements instead of one. You do not put an ID. What you would do is to create what we call a class. And a class, let's say that we create a class called my titles, my title class. All right. It begins by a point. And this class can be attributed to as much element as you want. So let's say you want to put a color yellow, okay? And I'm going to put here my title class, okay? And I save and I get back. And as we see, the two titles with the class have inherited from the CSS and not the last one. So remember, the H tag is for the unique element and the name has to be unique and it's on only one element. The class with the point, it's on several elements and you can at the end select element by their type. All right, so we linked our style.css in here to our index.html. We could have several uh, CSS files, okay? Let's say that we are going to copy-paste this one and call it, for instance, style1. Uh, nothing is impossible in here. I could um, also add as much CSS style as I want to my HTML page. But you got to know something. You got to know that actually, for, for the moment, the style only applies to index in here. So basically, index has uh, this color, the, 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 sorry, the title in index has this color. But if I go on my second article, on my first, second, and third article, I didn't import the CSS. So basically, what I should do every time I have to import the style 
in order that this style will be applied. So basically in here, I went too fast. So I'm going to comment this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the my title class to, for instance, um, my first text in here. So inside the P, I'm going to put my class and I update. And we see here now that my text here, so the paragraph, is still in black and not in yellow. This is because I didn't import up there. But if I do it and in the way that I find the path to the style.css and I save, if I get back, we see here that my class has been applied to my first paragraph. So if I right click and inspect quickly, we see that here I got my title class applied. Okay. And next to it, next to the HTML on the, on the inspector, I got the CSS that is written in here. Okay, and what the browser is allowing me to do, it allows me to remove classes that I can put inside the browser. So it doesn't change your styles.css, it doesn't write your style.css, it, it, it just appears inside your browser. It's like a demonstration of, of how it could be if you remove the class. Okay, so basically this is what happened. Um, what I would like to do, I would like, so we are going to yeah, update. What I would like to do, I would like to change, for instance, the font family. So basically, I could target, as I told you before, I would like to change the font family on everywhere. So in order to do so, I can type body. And remember, body, this is this selector. If I apply a class to body, if I ap apply an element to body, it will change everything that is under. So the children inherit from their parents. So back in here, I could type font family. And in here, you see that I can change the font. So I can click and let's put Gilles Sand. So basically, Gilles Sand, you should have it on your computer. If I update, there we go. You see, I change the font everywhere. I could put Arial. It's a basic font. Okay. And you see that the font change. So this is one. This is an attribute very interesting. I could also change the basic font size and say to the all font size to add 20 pixels. So you see, it's not between codes. I, you can put numbers like this with px for pixels. So here, it actually, it's 20 pixels, as you see. So 20 pixels. And if I save and I get back, we see that the font is higher. I could put 40 pixels. I update. You see the font. The last thing I want to show you is how can I import a font from the web? So I'm going to go on Google font. All right. And in Google font, you can add fonts that you don't have on your computer. Because if here I put the name of a font that I don't got, for instance, Guillaume font, the browser is not going to recognize the font and it will put to you the time new Romans like a default font. But in here, you have many other fonts that you could use. Okay. So basically, let's say that I want to use this font or maybe uh, let's change, let's say Bene. Let's say that we want Bene. This is the name of the font. So if I get back in here and instead of Guillaume, I, I put Bene, it doesn't recognize the font, all right? So basically in here, what I can do is that I can import this font. So what I can do, I can click in here on select this style. And what do we have in here? Just look at here. We've got the link of the file. Okay. So basically what you could do is copy and paste this link inside your post in here. So back in my head, I'm going to put my font. 
all right? And in here, I say Benny. So I get back, I update, and there we go, we've got our font. This is the HTML way. Let me show you the CSS way. So back in here, I'm going to remove my font from here, all right? So remove also this, okay? And what I can do, I can click on here on import, copy and paste this, get back on my CSS, and at the top, I can copy paste, import, URL, etc., etc. And if I get back, I update, there we go, we've got our font. Okay, back to the blog, I make some changes and I've put my image on the top in here, on the top header. And down here, we still have our image that when you click, drives us to our um, blog post, okay? So basically on the code, what I did, nothing really changes in here, but on the post precisely, so here I'm going to zoom a bit, on the post, what I did is that I've created also headers and this headers is always the same, okay? On every post, okay? So basically it's always me with my head. So if you go on every post, you will see all the time the same header that you get here, here on post two and here on post one. So basically, what I did also is that I've created a header inside the main. So I told you in the previous lesson to just put only one header, but if it's a main header, it has to be only one, but inside elements, you can also have header, of course. So basically in here, we get the header that has the button to get back to the home. Then we got also in here, the title, etc., etc. Okay. So basically, back to the index, what we're going to do, we are going to install or import a CSS framework. And this CSS framework work is Tailwind. So here you are going to type tailwindcss.com, okay? And you will arrive in here. So what is a CSS framework? A CSS framework, it's CSS already written that carry many class, many options already made. So basically here on the example, as, as you see, okay, we are adding class to HTML elements. And when we add class, the changes appear in here. Okay. So as you see, I can make the text center, etc., etc. I can make elements next to them, etc., etc. So I'm going to teach you now how to add Tailwind to your blog. So basically Tailwind CSS in here can be imported in several ways. And we can see that we can import um, CSS, but also elements, components that will help us to build quicker our design. So basically in here, we are going to click on installation and here you see that for CSS, for JavaScript framework that helps you to create a um, faster website, we have a special path to follow to um, install Tailwind. But in here, on the right side, you are going to click on using Tailwind via CDN. And when you click down, you see that you get this text with those red spots. And we see that we can import in here Tailwind as a CSS sheet. So this CSS sheet is coming from the web. So I'm going to copy paste this. All right. We see with this kind of import, it doesn't carry all that Tailwind can provide to us. For instance, we, we wouldn't, wouldn't be able to customize Tailwind. We will not be able to use directive, etc., etc. But actually, we don't need them for this kind of project. So I copy paste this link. Okay. I get back to my website in here. And remember to add a CSS style sheet. It's in the head. And so basically in here on index.html, I'm going to copy paste one time only, the CSS 
on the head. And when I get back and I update, yeah, we see that things changed. The font changed, the size of the image stick to the, to the border, etc, etc. And to check if I already imported uh, Tailwind as well, I'm going to right click, go to network, and I'm going to load again the page. And when I load again the page, we see here that I got tailwind.css. And in here, we see that we got an image. And when we type the class rounded full to this image, the image is getting rounded. So I want to do the same on my header in here. So I'm going to get back to my image in here. Okay. And on the image, I'm going to put the attribute class. And in this class, I'm going to put rounded full. So rounded full. So I'm going to fetch the class of rounded full of Tailwind and it will apply normally a rounded image. And there we go. We see that I got my image rounded. So basically we are going to use Tailwind to create this kind of design immediately. Okay, we've got Tailwind imported inside our HTML page. Let's now design entirely our website. So back on the website of Tailwind CSS, I'm going to click on documentation up there. And in here, actually, I got a documentation that is going to tell me what I can import as components, as classes, etc, etc. Because I, as I showed you here, when I type a class and I give a class to the element, it applies the class from Tailwind. So if I right click on my thumbnail and remember I added the class rounded full, we see here that the style is imported from Tailwind.css. Okay. So basically if I go on my um, post one.html, I don't get, I don't get here, um, I don't get Tailwind imported. So what I'm going to do, Instead of copying, pasting this link in here, I'm going to show you the CSS way to import Tailwind. So I'm going to copy paste the href in here. Okay. And I'm going to go on style.css. And up there, I'm going to type import. Okay. To import actually Tailwind. URL parenthesis codes. All right. And inside here, I'm going to copy paste the link of Tailwind and I'm going to remove this and remember my post one have the style that I import already. So Tailwind is going to be imported everywhere. I put my style.css. So if I get back and I update, there we go. We see that the uh, style has been formatted. It's a space around. So basically what I'm going to do in here, of course, on my index.html, what I'm going to do in here, I want to center all of this. So basically, I want to center and I want to make some space because this is too stuck in one place. So what we're going to do, the header, I'm going to apply a class to the header that is going to be a class that will put space up and down. Okay. And what I can do is to put first a padding. So padding, this is, imagine a container, this is space between elements inside the container and the border of the container. The margin, it's space outside the container. I got to put, as you see in here, they put an eight. Eight, this is eight um, in, in Tailwind, you got sizes already made. So we are, are going to use those index of sizes. So it's eight, four, 12, 16, and blah, 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 etc. And more you go up in the, in the numbers, uh, the, the bigger the size is, is going to be. So basically in here, if I copy paste, we will see, I'm going to copy paste for the header, P -E P Y. 8 and px8. So what is it going to do? It's going to create space on the left and on the right and on the top. But why py and px? y and x, it's abscess. 
So basically, if I want to put it everywhere, PEA, PY8 and PX8, the equivalent is P8. But if you just want to put top, it's going to be uh, um, Y. If you, if you want to put it left and right, it's going to be X. So I'm going to remove this, just put 8, and we will see there is no difference. But if I put PX, it's going to be on the left, on the right. And if I put P8, it's going to be just on the top and the bottom. Amazing. So I don't want to have 8. What I want to have is 16. So I'm going to go there and I go, I got a lot of space. Amazing. Then what I want to do first, put some spaces between by blog and a blog by Guillaume Durand. So just after the image, we got rounded full. I'm going to put um, P. And in here, what I can also do with Tailwind and what I like a lot is that I can determine if I want to put space on the top, on the left, on the right, and on the bottom. And you understand now that you, we can use PT for the top, PB for the bottom, PL for the left, R for the right, etc. So here it's going to be PB because I want to put space on the bottom, PB8. So it's going to be on the image. I'm going to put a padding of 8 on the bottom. And if I update, there we go. I got my padding. All right. So we see that the image isn't really rounded in here because this is not really a square. I should have put uh, choose an image squared so it could be really rounded, but it doesn't matter for me. So now I want to care about the size of the title. So basically in here, I got the quick search and what I can do, I can type text size. And here I got the font size that gives me classes that I can apply to put a font size. So basically text, I'm going to zoom, text 5XL, etc, etc. This is, is, we see here, the CSS that it provides. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to try the text 5XL. So I'm going to copy paste, get back. And in here, instead of display one, I'm going to put text minus 5XL on by blog. And if I update, there we go. We've got a big title. And what I want to do, the thick caption in here, it's going to be exactly the same, but a bit lower, 2XL. And we are there. Amazing. So you see, the sizes are already made in Tailwind. And what I like the most is that it's if you make it lower, it will apply um, automatically on the responsive size. This is what I like with CSS frameworks. Another stuff that we want to do, we want to center all of this. So basically here in the search, I'm going to type center. And if I type enter, there we go. We've got an element that shows us that uh, we can make uh, center elements like this. So I'm going to try to um, to say I'm going to put um, maybe in here. So align self. So maybe it's not this. We're going to be text center text alignment. And there we go. We've got the class called text center. So if I put text center, we see that here the element is going to be centered. OK, so what I'm going to do Back in here, I'm going to try to put this on the header because I want it to apply to all the elements down here. So I'm going to type text center. I'm going to save, get back. And there we go. But it's working only on the text. And if I want to do it on the image, I got to use the margin auto. So what is margin auto? Margin auto, basically, it's and uh, a class that is going to be to help me to center an element. OK, so basically in here, remember, I show you the here, the size for the space between what I could do. What I could do is to use MX auto. So basically on my image, I'm going to type MX auto. OK, for margin X, on the left or the right, automatic. And if I update, there we go. We've got our, um, our image like, like here. So basically, we've got our header. This is done. What we're going to care now, it's going to be all the image down here. What we're going to do, we want to make something flex. We want to make something um, that I want to have 
all my articles next to each other. So how oh, I'm going to do this? We will have to import a grid. What is a grid? So here I'm going to click here and type grid. Okay, so grid auto flow and there we go. So basically we want elements to be next to each other like this. And the grid is going to help us to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here on grid columns, uh, template columns, and it will create columns as we want. So we can create two columns, three columns, four columns, up to 12. So basically in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy paste in here this code. So grid is going to say, please put all the elements next to each other. Grid calls free is going to say, please create for me three columns. One, two, three. And gap is going to say, please put space between those elements. So back in here, what I want to do, I want that all the image next to each other. So in here, we see that my image are between uh, uh, anchors. So here we see tags, etc. So the code, is, the code is not really clean. So what I got to do first is to clean the code quickly. So here and in here and remove this. And there we go. My code is clean. Okay. So back in here, I'm going to save. So I get back. I just clicked. Okay. So I'm going to apply to the section the code that I have in here. So I'm going to copy paste the class. Okay, so I'm going to type it actually. So class, and I'm going to say, please behave like a grid. Okay, please create for me three columns with the elements down here. Okay, and please have a gap of four. So four, this is the index. So there we go. I'm going to update and look at what happened. And look at this. Look at how amazing is this? Our image automatically changed the size, the size, sorry, and just straight to the column, stick to the column, okay? But let me show you something quickly about that. If you are on a mobile, so basically in here we've got our free image like this, but if you go lower, let's say that we are on a mobile. So in here we see that the image are too little. What we want to do, we would like to say as a class, act as a responsive element. So responsive, it means adapt yourself to the size of the screen and put the image up uh, if you are on a mobile. So we want just one column. So what we could do in here is that before grid, we could say, or, or may, I think just after grid. So we could say before, just act like one column. And as you see, I put this MD so MD, it's medium. So we've got small, medium, and large. And basically, on the documentation of um, here, responsive size, let's say, responsive design, we see here that we've got the size of the screen. So 640 pixels, 768 pixels, etc., etc. So basically, we would say, at this size, behave the way I told you. And if you don't put this after, behave like you, you're supposed to do. So I'm going to update and we see here that we get back to the beginning. Why? Because we said that after medium, behave like this. But basically what we want to do, we want to say that after medium, create for me the free column. But under the medium size, so in mobile, behave in one column. So... I should put first the responsive, then the desktop class. And it will automatically apply the class that you need based on your size. So here, I'm going to get back in here. So as you see, in medium, I got three columns and in mobile, I got one. So I go back to home. And if I get lower, you will see at the moment, there we go, as you see, my website automatically apply on the size that I want it to. So this is the beginning of responsive. I'm not going to explain that too much to you because this is not the purpose of this course. But if you want to learn responsive, Tailwind is amazing to create responsive websites. And this is really important for you 
to understand what is responsive. So back in here, what we're going to do, we are going to work on all the design and we are going to start like we did on the index.html in here. Basically on my title, I'm going to take this class and here on my post, I'm going to put a big title as well. Okay. And in bi this big title is going to have space before and after. So I'm going to put the class PY4. Okay. All right. I don't want to have my text and my image stuck on the border in here. So in order to do so, I'm going to use what we call a container. So the container is going to help me, okay, to create space and to have a max width. Okay, so basically what we're going to do, I can go in here and on my body, okay, or preferably on the main. So I'm going to type class container and MX auto as we saw with the image. So it's going to center all the content. And this is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to update and there we go. We see that we got space there. All right. So basically what I can do also is to put, um, let's say, a minimum text class on all the text that we've got in here. Okay. So I can use text LG class to say to minimally on all the body, put this size of the text. Okay. So I'm going to update and there we go. We see that the text is going up. What I could do is text XL to start. And there we go. Our text is way bigger. What I would like to do is say to this image to take all the space. So what I can do is use a class. Okay. In here, class call with full. So basically on a tailwind, I'm going, I can type width. And here we see that we can apply width to a lot of elements. So remember the number that you put after can decide of the width of the element that you want. So it can be a minimum width, etc., etc. And if you use this on a several element with the class flex that we are going to see just after, you can do this kind of thing. Okay. Colons that have more space than other, etc., etc. So I put the width full to my image. And if I update, there we go. We've got our width full. Okay. So basically in here, what I want to do also is to put a text center to all this. So I'm going to type class text center. So my title, the author and the post is going to be on the center. I'm going to update this and there we go. So I've put my image outside of the div that contains the post title, the author and my post date. And what I can do now is say margin button and I want to put an eight. I want to have space on the button. Okay. So I'm going to save, get back. And there we go. This is what we're going to do also for the image. We don't want to have the image to stuck to the text. So basically down here, what I'm going to do on the header, because the image is inside the header, it's inside the header that I want to put space on the bottom. So I'm going to type class MB. And in here, I'm going to put 16 instead of eight, because I want to have more space. Most of the time we have more space. So now we see it's cleaner than we had to we had before what i want to do the back home back to home okay the last thing i want to talk to you about guys is the flex so basically what is flex flex in css helps you to display element next to each other this is really important we saw it with the grid before the grid is carrying already the flex but you have to learn how to use flex to display elements inside columns as you want. In order to do so, there is a, a flex guide, okay, on CSS um, tricks, which is amazing. And I will put you the link down below, the complete guide of Flexbox. If you want to go further in web development and especially in front end, you have to be a master of Flexbox. So basically in here, it explains to you how the elements are organized with flex and how you can create elements, colons uh, like this with spaces, alignments, etc, etc. 
Guys, this is the end of this course. Thank you so much. Congratulations for everything you, you follow through all this process. I hope you really enjoy HTML and CSS. Tailwind also. I wish you good luck. See you. Bye-bye.